All right, welcome back to another edition of Intermediate Accounting 1. We're going to continue on with Learning Objective 5 of Chapter 10, where we look at certain special circumstances with valuing and disposing of property, plant, and equipment. So, a company may retire or dispose, however you want to call it, retire or dispose of its property, plant, and equipment in a couple different ways. One of the ways we talked about before was an exchange of non-monetary assets, or enema. Another way of getting rid of our PP&E is by sale. Just flat out sale for cash. And another one that we haven't yet talked about in much detail was, or is, involuntary conversion. E.g., for example, theft or fire, etc. There's also abandonment. We won't really talk about that because most companies don't just abandon their property, plant, and equipment because it's not economically or um, it's not economically or eco-friendly, I should say, to do so. Depreciation. If we dispose of PP&E, depreciation must be taken up to the date of disposition. So if we sell, say for instance, in um, middle of the year, then we have to take, say for example, half year's depreciation. So if we have, say nine years goes by, and we sell it in year 10, halfway through year 10, we cannot just simply say, well, we have nine years worth of accumulated depreciation. We have to take accumulated depreciation all the way to the 9.5 year mark. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next in an example. So disposition of pp &E, this is a sale. We're gonna look at the sale of plant assets. So Barrett Company recorded depreciation on a machine costing $18,000, originally costing $18,000, was depreciated for nine years at a rate of $1,200 per year. It sells the machine in the middle of the 10th year. So I, as always, I always recommend you guys take the time to draw this stuff out in a timeline. So this is year one, this is year two, et cetera, et cetera, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. We're in year 10. This is where a lot of people tend to make a mistake on the homework problems and the test problems. So draw it out as much as possible. We're in the middle of the 10th year. So we're going to take $1,200, multiply it by one half. And that means we have depreciation of $600 that we have to catch up on. Again, annual depreciation was $1,200 per year. So if you think about this, nine years, $1,200 per year times nine years, right? That's 10800 We have to tack on an additional 600 plus 600 to catch up our total amount of depreciation incurred. So down below, the depreciation journal entry that we have to record, say, on June 30th, let's just say, is a debit to depreciation expense for 600 and a credit to accumulated depreciation for 600. And when we do that, we our overall total accumulated depreciation at the date we sell this will look something like this. We'll have 18,000 or excuse me, $10,800 worth of 9 years depreciation and then Half a year for year 10, 600 of depreciation, bringing us to a total 11,400 of depreciation, accumulated depreciation. So in the accumulated depreciation T account, what we would see if we looked inside of it is 1,200, 1,200, et cetera, et cetera, for nine years. And then in the 10th year, we would have 600. So a total accumulated depreciation by the time we sell it is 11,400. Why is that important? We're going to look at that next. Scrolling down here. So total accumulated depreciation, 11400 Total cost basis, Kevin, behave. Total cost basis was 18000 
So our net book value, NBV, is 6600 at the date we sell it, at the sale date. Now, we received in this transaction $7,000, and if our net book value was 6600 that means, put simply, we have a gain on the sale in this transaction. It's Again, it's for cash. Cash is pretty objective. We're not doing an enema transaction. This one's pretty straightforward. So down below, what we're going to do is record the cash. We got the cash. Yay, we like cash. 7,000. I don't do my smiley faces as much anymore. Must be the corona. Debit. Get rid of accumulated depreciation. Get rid of the cost basis of the machine. Those things respectively were 11,800 from up above. And the 18,000 from up above as well which means that, as a plug figure, we must have had a gain. Call this one gain on sale, because we actually sold it. If we dispose of it, that's one thing. But if we actually sell it, we can call it a gain on sale. The bottom line is, regardless of whatever the title is, it's a gain. In this case, it was $400. And that transaction balances. So that's about as complicated as I want to make for a basic sale for cash. So as long as you get that transaction, you should be fine for the exam. Let's move on to another one. Disposition of PPE that involves involuntary conversion, which is a fancy phrase for things like when things were stolen, right? So, involuntary conversion occurs when an asset service is terminated due to fire, flood, theft. Condemnation, whatever. Something happened, it was outside the control of the company. Outside, or to say not in the company's control. Right? So, what happens in those cases? Obviously, there's going to be some sort of loss. There's never really a gain in these types of conversions. And even if there were, the FASB usually prohibits that. So, these are situations that involve a loss typically. So, any gain, mostly at loss, calculated as a difference between the amount recovered and the asset's book value, or cost minus the accumulated depreciation at the termination date. At the termination date. Remember, we have to do a catch-up of depreciation. Don't forget that. A lot of people tend to forget doing a catch-up on depreciation and they miss points on the exam for that. So don't let that be you. Okay. Treat these gains or losses like any other type of disposition. So just other stuff on the income statement. We're going to go through an example now. So Camel Transport Company had to sell a plant located in a company's property that stood directly in the path of an interstate highway. For a number of years, the state had sought to purchase the land from the company in the, in the path of the interstate. The state ultimately exercised its right of eminent domain, which the courts upheld. That means it's gone. In settlement, Camel received, the company received, $500,000 as compensation. That's what happens in eminent domain. So this one is kind of a pretty straightforward type of situation. You can start just plugging in the journal entry with what you know. The company got cash of $500,000. Okay? And it lost its, well, in this case, what was it? Uh, the plant, ha plant and land, we'll just call this overall just plant and land, uh, the value of the plant and land had a book value of 200000 400000 less accumulated. You have to write these things out separately now, so don't forget. Debit accumulated depreciation, the 200000 and credit plant, if you will, for the 400000 
Now, if you do that, you can see that we need another plug figure. This total amount of debits is 700,000. We have 400,000 here. So we need another 300,000 credit to make this balance. In this case, there must be a gain. Don't overthink this thing. Gain on disposal or that's fine. We disposed of it or it was disposed for us. Don't overthink this type of a problem. Just fill out what you know in the journal entry and plug in whether or not it's a loss or a gain. Keep it simple, especially for the sake of the final exam. And that is all I have for the Learning Objective 5. So we are done with Chapter 10. Yay! Done with Chapter 10. Yay! So if you have any questions with that stuff, be sure to, you're welcome to email me or post questions in the discussion board, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Cheers.